Hi, this is Faz Shakir, Editor-in-Chief of ThinkProgress.org. Um, this will be my first vlog entry, and so I thought a good place to begin would be to discuss our blog's bombshell report on the Chamber of Commerce's foreign funding. I think there's been some confusion strewn about um, by some in the media and by many on the right about our report, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to lay out some of the core facts. Number one, we know that the Chamber acknowledges that it receives foreign funding. This wasn't something that was talked about prior to our report, and I think we've at least started a national discourse about it. Number two, we know that at least $885,000 is coming from 84 foreign-based corporations into the chamber, and number three, that that money is going into the chamber's 501c6 account. Number four, that 501c6 account is the same account that is used to fund the chamber's unprecedented $75 million political attack campaign. So those are the core facts. Um, the chamber claims that it has a system in place to ensure that it is not violating any laws and that it is separating the money that it receives from abroad from the money that it raises domestically for the purposes of um, running these political attack campaigns. They say they have a system. They haven't disclosed anything about that system. And I think what we're trying to do is raise some concerns about the fact that if that money is going into the account, that money is fungible. And if they have an expectation they can raise a certain amount of money from abroad, it certainly factors into their decision about how much money they can spend on political races. You know, the chamber is basically operating as a pack. That is, they're running ads in some of the most tightly contested races to try to influence the outcome of the elections. Um, that's what political action committees do. But the chamber isn't operating legally as a pack because PACs have to do two things that the chamber doesn't want to do. One is PACs have to disclose their donors, and number two, they have to abide by contribution limits on those donors. And uh, the chamber is taking loads of money uh, and not disclosing who those donors might be. And, uh, you know, I think it's particularly important in an election where everyone acknowledges that the most important issue is jobs, that the chamber has a record on jobs. And that record is they support the outsourcing of jobs. President and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, Tom Donahue, has said that he believes outsourcing is a wonderful thing, it has great value, um, and he's been a proud proponent of it. And, uh, and they've also, the Chamber has lobbied to preserve tax advantages for companies that ship jobs overseas. So this isn't a, um, something to be taken lightly, and I think what we've identified from the foreign-based funding is that the chamber is now receiving money from corporations that are the beneficiaries of outsourcing. Um, you know, we identified of the 84 foreign-based corporations who are giving money to the Chamber of Commerce, at least the ones that we know of, um, that seven of them are companies that are specialists in outsourcing and proudly say that they are um, experts and leaders in the field. And so the chamber has a great relationship. It's certainly making a lot of a great relationship with outsourcers and making a lot of money off its position on outsourcing. And uh, we think it's important that the public be aware of this agenda so that it can make a determination about the ads that it's seeing on TV. Um, but of course, the chamber isn't disclosing who its donors are. And so I think at the end of the day, you know, this isn't about accounting gimmicks. It's about who they're accountable to. If right-wing actors can take gobs of corporate money to try to buy off seats in our political system by running dishonest ads without disclosing the corporate sponsors of those ads, then how long will we be able to say that we have the greatest democracy on earth?